Welcome to the Crimson Tide Connection, your home for Crimson Tide Sports. I'm joined today by the head coach of the Alabama men's golf team, Jay Sewell. Coach, thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. Coach, congratulations on recently receiving your ninth straight invitation to NCAA postseason play. That's a pretty remarkable feat. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Yeah, proud of the guys. They've, they've done a great job all year in uh, getting a number one seed at that. So really proud of what they've done this year. And Coach, you won't have to go too far. You're, go, you're going down to Baton Rouge for the Baton Rouge Regional. It will be played at the University Club of Baton Rouge on May the 16th through the 18th. Uh, we were talking earlier, you said you know a little bit about that course, but they've kind of changed it, though, haven't they? They have. Uh, we played there probably one of my first two years here. And, and, and I guess about five years ago, David Toms, an alumni of LSU, came in and spent a, a great deal of money and redid the entire golf course. And so it's going to be a little different than I remember. Um, I know it's a very good golf course. I've talked with Coach Potter. Coach Potter and them have been down the LSU here in the last couple of years. And so we'll have a little bit of a, of a scouting report, but we'll have to kind of get ready on the practice round. Coach, uh, the course may be a little unfamiliar, but something that will be familiar would be the field. You have four SEC teams in Florida, LSU, Mississippi State, and Tennessee, and also uh, South Alabama and UAB in there. So it's kind of an SEC Southern flair there, isn't it? There really is. Um, you know, when they were going down off the list last night, you know, they started going and said, well, there's another SEC, there's another <laughs> SEC. And so, which, you know, tells, us, tells me that the uh, regional is very strong. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have about nine teams ranked in the top 25 in our conference, and so we're familiar with them, and we also, which also reminds us that we're familiar how good they are, and right. so we look forward to, to going to LSU. It's nice to be able to get in a van and drive instead of having the hassle of, of, of planes, um, so we look forward to that. Um, the familiarity of the, of the teams helps us, and it mm -hmm. also, uh, I think, especially in the preparation, that we need to be really focused to the detail of what we're doing because uh, we need to be really, really good next week. Coach, along with receiving your ninth straight postseason invitation, you also received some other accolades, and that goes to Corey Whitsett. He was named the SEC Player of the Year and also the Scholar Athlete of the Year. So he's getting it done on the course and then in the classroom, isn't he? Uh, he really is. I'm really proud of Corey. Um, you know, he's always uh, – been exemplary of what a student athlete should be. Um, he's a great leader in that. Um, he's great in the classroom. A 4.0 student, right. the Elite 89 in, in the NCAA's last year, and you know, and he's really up for Player of the Year this year in college in college golf. And so I'm really proud of, you know, not just taking the easy road. God's given him a talent of just being good here, but he's right. also accepted the challenge of, of of being a great student, which our whole team has been, which I'm really proud of. We won the. You know, GPA award for athletic department. Um, Bobby Watts also a perfect 4.0, a first team All American. Justin Thomas is a 3.75, you know, player of the year. And so, not only are these three guys really the leaders on our golf course, they're really the leaders of our team um, as student athletes. You know, talking about that, those three right there, they're kind of a, a triple-headed monster there at the top of your lineup. Can you talk about them and what do they bring to this lineup and what do you expect to see from them down there at the region on Baton Rouge? Well, they bring, first of all, great talent. And we just talked about, you know, what they bring. You know, their focus and their um, – and, and their ability to uh, to want to be good at everything they do is infectious. It, it bleeds through our whole team, and it bleeds to me. Uh, yeah. It is fun to watch. It's fun to watch them be dedicated to their craft. Um, and so, but they also bring great notoriety. You know, we are known because of them. I mean, they're probably the three of the best players in the entire world, and they're playing here at the University yeah. of Alabama. And so, you know, in the formula to you know to build a great pro, you got to have you know you got to have some leaders. You have to have you know talent. Um, and those three guys are, you know, would be number one man for all the teams in the country. And for them to be all on one team is, is, is really exciting and very helpful as a coach. Of course, you go along with those three great guys at the top lineup. You've also got some depth at four through seven in this lineup, and that has to be a pretty good luxury for you, isn't it? It really is. And like I said, you know, we've got those three guys that lead us. But if you're going to be a championship program, you're going to have to have, lack of a better word, role players, people mm -hmm. who accept roles, very talented, who maybe don't have the notoriety or whatever, but have the games that will complement and also help us be a champion. Um, to be a champion is not three parts. You know, you can't have three or five parts. Right. You have to have all the parts. And so I'm really proud of the of our back back end of our lineup or the guys that are um, battling for that, you know, and, and Trey and Scott Strohmeyer. Uh, have really done a great job of being that for us this mm -hmm. year. And, and if we're going to be successful, everybody's got to be successful. Everybody's got to be great. And Trey and Scott have done a really great job of, of taking their games to another level and, um, and helping us be one of the great teams in college golf. 
Well, Coach, I know probably everyone outside of the team has this team already circled in for the NCAA championships. But before you get there, you've got to play well in this regional. And how do you keep the team focused going into that with such high expectations? Well, I think that's the best challenge of this team. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm, I believe our leadership is in place and the mindset is in place that we're not going to overlook anything. We haven't done it all year. We haven't done it in any shot or any round or any tournament. And so I'm confident in that, but it is going to be the focus of our meeting today. And it basically is we've got one task at hand, and that's to be great next week. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or the next tournament or whatever it may be. We have to be great at the NCAA regionals because if we're not, then we might not get to play. That's right. athletics. And so I think our guys recognize that, and um, it will be the so source of information we have here for this week, that's for sure. Well, Coach, good luck down there in Baton Rouge. As we said it would be May the 16th through the 18th at the University Club down there. Good luck. Thank you very much. Uh, you can keep up with the men's golf team here on RollTide.com. We'll have a complete wrap-up of the Tides play down there in Baton Rouge right after that. But, Coach, for now, congratulations on your ninth straight appearance, and good luck. Thank you. Roll Tide. For Head Coach Jay Sewell, I'm Chris Fringland, and that's it for this edition of the Crimson Tide Connection.